Hey guys, Shane here for Tech 3D Printing. As you can see, there's a lot going on. We got stuff everywhere now. It's great. 300 subscriber contest going on. Let's talk about it. So hey guys, welcome back. Today's a great day. I was able to get some stuff done. As you can see behind me, I have things finally on the wall. It's great stuff. So now there's less on my desk, a little bit more up. But I'm still working on it. Uh, we're going to get there to a more, uh, a better setup here, a better organization system. I'm still unpacking things and getting uh, it set up. But it's a good start. And it adds, adds a little bit more to my backdrop so it's not so plain. It's a little hectic right now, but, you know, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Okay, so we do have the 300 subscriber giveaway to announce. And we're going to do that shortly. But we're going to talk about here first is I did a great big print of Squirtle. I... Put it out there on my Facebook page and in the Folger Tech group, and uh, because it was on my Folger Tech. So let's take a look at it. So let's talk about what happened here. So it failed, and it sits on like this. And as you can kind of see down there, it's really hard to see with the blue. I'm sorry. So it looks like is I just, I just lost my layer adhesion on from this level until it went up about well I'm going to say 15, 20 layers, and then it finally caught back up again. Then it was okay, but. Uh, and I, it just, that part was just barely sticking on. I just, it popped right off. Sorry, I was really loud. Other than that, the print was fantastic. A uh, little bit of issues down here on the tail and a little bit here in the shoulders. But, I mean, it can't do a fail. So let's take a look at a real one. Here he is. So here is my giant Squirtle. He's huge. You can see Pikachu's up there. This is going to be his little shelf mate here. I want to print all the low poly ones as a nice big scale. So this was at 500% scale on my Forge Tech FT5. And I slowed it down. So I print with the Forge Tech FT5 at 4,500 millimeters per minute. And that's what I printed that at. Everything was going great until it hit the neck and then it failed. So I was like, okay, let's slow it down. So I had it printing fast for about the first half of it because I knew the first half would come out pretty well. And then I just turned my speed down to, I believe it was 80% of the 4,500 millimeters per minute. And I was like, okay, let's let it go, see how it is in the morning. I woke up and here it was as a nice, perfect print. This is two perimeters, zero infill. So Joel did a video a long time ago. I'll put a link up here if you haven't seen it before. And his video was about quit wasting plastic on infill. You know, you can do big prints like this without any infill at all, you just need to do appropriate settings and have appropriate cooling for your 3D printer for either you know your print cool fan. So that's always been a big thing for me as well. When I print this big stuff, I try to print it hollow. I mean, I have plastic, I do get plastic in, but I mean, hey, it's entirely not terribly cheap sometimes. So I kind of want to be you know uh, careful on what I'm using it all on, and I did buy this PLA on my own. This is the Inland Blue PLA. It is a bit translucent, which I was not expecting. I was expecting more of an opaque color, but that's okay. I'm happy with this. And I mean, all of them came out practically perfect. A little bit of issues here in the bottom of the eyes. And again, on the tail, it just sits a little bit far and the angle's a little bit odd for the print. So uh, it comes out just a little bit weird down there, but you can't really tell. But from the front, he looks great. I like it. Okay, so the only thing I got in the mail today was this. And this is the Tri Gorilla MOSFET that I've been recommending to a lot of people because this is really what you need. And I'm going off this recommendation from Tom's video, link up here, because he went into great detail about why MOSFETs are good to use over, not over, but instead of a solid state relay, an SSR. So I picked this up. This is going to be to control the heated pad on my Forge Tech FT5. It's a 280 watt, 12 volt heat pad. And this is for the low voltage, which is 12 volts is all low voltage stuff. So the reason why this is so good is because this pulls the amperage off of your MKS board. The MKS board, the green connection on there, which are a Phoenix type connector, but they're really not. They're just the turn downs are only rated to 20 amps. This big connector here, last I checked, was rated to 80 amps, which is huge and great. So you don't have to worry about it melting or anything happening with that. And it's great big connectors here for large gauge wire if you're going to up the gauge a bit. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. So, but this dumps a lot of heat into the MOSFET. You can't really tell, but the thing is about an inch by three-quarter inch in size. It's huge down in there. And it dumps it all into this heat sink. 
A lot of people worry, well, how much heat comes off the heat sink? Well, I have a temperature probe, so we're gonna be testing it out, checking it out, see what it comes to. But I have some 12 volt fans, and these are little $2 12 volt fans. These are what you use on your extruder to cool it, and this fits perfectly right on top of it. So with a M3 screw, so I can put two, four, how many screws I wanna put in this, right here into the heat sink, and that'll hold it down, and I can directly run this straight to the power coming in because it's 12 volts again 12 volt fan and that will run and be able to cool this perfectly and it's a super easy mod you can do there's no extra enclosure anything you need to do and we're going to look at where to actually put this so for now it's just going to sit inside the hatch which is in the back of the ft5 but um, we might look at something a little better for it later but again so i'm going to do a video just on installing this and how to set it all up real soon i can't wait to do it i'm super excited about it Okay, another thing I hinted at here lately was on my group and a couple other places is I'm doing some fan setups for the FT5. Now these fan setups are specific. So these are for the Folger Tech FT5 using the Titan extruder with an E3D hot end and the Volcano nozzle setup. A lot of people out there are using this setup and there are, oh heck, five to 10 different fan setups, which I think I have, I think it's seven or eight of them. I'm still looking to make sure I'm catching them all. And if, if I post these things on the social media and you guys notice something I'm missing, please let me know and I'll, I will get to it right away. One of the most prominent ones out there right now is a Scorpion fan that one of the guys in the Foliage Tech group has designed. And it's still kind of in its beta for the Volcano nozzle. He has a pretty solid one for the standard E3D V6 nozzle. So this one's a little different. So I'm gonna be trying that out. I'm gonna print it out here tonight, after, probably after I finish this video. I'm gonna get that printed. I'm gonna continue testing. So I have three tests going. It's gonna be the Benchy. I found a, a general torture test um, on Thingiverse. And I found a lattice cube on Thingiverse. And the lattice cube actually has been a pretty good test. And I can really tell what fans are doing, what fans are doing well, like what fan setups are doing well and ones ones are not. And I can also tell if the fans are going far too fast or not fast enough. So there's a lot of tweaking I'm doing and I'm trying to keep it as the least amount of variables in it I can say. So I'm using the same files for all fan setups, the same fan speeds with all fan setups. And I'm using the same filament, the same temperature, the same speed, trying to keep everything as the same as possible that I can so that we can really see which cooling setup is the best of the best for this particular setup on the FT5. So that's, again, that's gonna probably take me another week to do the testing and all the prints because to do to do the testing for one fan setup takes about 10 hours for all the prints. So that has to just take its time and run the course. And once I get them all printed out, then I'll be able to sit down and do the video and that'll be, that'll be pretty exciting. So a lot of you guys are looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it too because I have no idea what's the best setup. So we'll see all that real soon. Okay, so a little bit more about the Cube 3 so I've ran into some issues with the testing and on trying to get the hack to work. So first off, I did write to E3D Systems and said, hey guys, what are you doing about this? You know, are you gonna unlock it or anything like that in the future? So my reply back from that was no, we're currently not looking into unlocking it and we will be providing support and filament for the printer up until 2018. So as far as them allowing it, nothing yet. I'm looking into trying to fake the chip. If I can, there is a guy out on, on uh, YouTube, he did post a video how he had a little device in order to fake the chip. And he's so far been unresponsive to emails because I'm trying to figure out how he did that. I am not an electrical engineer or anything like that to try and figure out the electronics behind it, or an electrician I should say, to try and figure out what it is behind that he's doing and in order to fake that chip, or if he's just faking everybody out. So. I'm looking and trying to get in touch with him, see what he's doing. I've tried a few other techniques with filament swaps. Uh, there's another guy on YouTube and he did, actually I'll link his here and before I'll link the other guy's uh, video. So he was able to do a filament swap, a filament spool swap. So he's put in one filament spool and switch it to the other one and it would continue printing. I have not been able to do that. It could be because my one spool is fully depleted and I only have two spools. So I would need to buy another spool in order to kind of play around with it more. But either way, you're still gonna deplete one of the spools. And I was able to do a lot of printing with the Cube 3 on my other one, which was swapping them out and just hacking, taking the one totally apart, putting in a third party filament. And it's been printing 
absolutely great and with all things the Folger Tech filament which I had a horrible time with. So it printed me for me for a while but then all of a sudden it was like oh you're out of filament we can't print with this boy anymore. So that sucked. I'm still looking into it. I'm going to be pursuing it for the next coming weeks. I might have to side table that here soon in order to kind of catch up on some of the filament reviews I need to work on and some other prints that I need to do. But again, it is on my list of things to work on and I am actively pursuing it. Lots of you guys are watching for that, so I will do my best to keep working on it. Okay, last but not least, the item on our list is the 300 subscriber contest. So let me just say thank you to everyone that is subscribed. Thanks to all the new subscribers that came with the contest. Thank you to my Patreons that are out there. You guys provide financial support for the channel. Thank you to you guys that are using my affiliate codes for either Maker Geeks or for Amazon. I see what you guys are purchasing. I see that things are going through. I'm very grateful of all of that. As I said, it's now time to get back, so let's have at it. So out of 28 people, we had 123 entries, and the winner is James Wilson. So congratulations, James. You won yourself a roll of Philobot Petchy Plus filament. I'll be mailing this out to you tomorrow. So you should have it in about two weeks. Sorry, mail takes a little long to get away from me here. So you'll have it very soon and I'll be contacting you via email, I think, with Gleam. I think there's a contact button, but I'll figure it out. I haven't done Gleam before, so we're, we're working on it now. And congratulations to you. Thanks to everyone else. I hope to do another contest right around 500 subscribers. So we'll see where we stand with what we have in stock here and what I have in. So congratulations and thank you all for participating. That's going to be it today, guys. Thank you very much for your help, your support, and for watching me throughout these past couple months. It's been a great ride so far. I can hope to continue it. And again, to James Wilson, congratulations. I hope you're saying your first name right. Congratulations, and I hope you enjoy the filament. I'd love to see some prints from you with it. And that all being said, thanks, guys. And if you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more of what I do, hit the subscribe button. You can also hit the little bell and get an email whenever I do a video, and you'll be the most up-to-date with what's going on in my world here at Fugatech 3D Printing. If you want to support the channel, you can do the via Patreon. You can donate me a dollar or two or more or none. I greatly appreciate anything that comes my way. I thank you all for the support. I have affiliate links through Amazon and through Maker Geeks. So Maker Geeks actually has their own subscription box now, which is great. I'll put a link down below, and I think it's a great way to spread the word about what the filament they have. I have two rolls in it, so I have an affiliate link down there with that. So if you order with the link, you help me out, and if you do any of your Christmas shopping or everyday shopping on Amazon, that all goes also directly to help the channel. So thank you, everyone, and until next time, happy printing.